So the first one, it says classify each figure as a line, right, or line segment. Um, so this may seem pretty easy. Just let it be easy. Don't overlook the easy stuff because you need the easy stuff to maximize your score. So a line looks like this. It goes forever and ever in each direction. Remember, these are also like notes or a study guide. And then a ray has one end point and it goes on in one direction. And then a line segment has an end point on both sides. Um, and it looks like this. So for the first one, it says this figure right here, what is it? A line rate or line segment? Because it goes on forever on both sides, it is a line. And then to write it, you would choose this symbol right here. And then to name it, you use two points on the line, just like TU. Um, if it had another point, you would still only use two points on that line to name it. Okay, next one. Um, this right here is a line segment because it has an endpoint on both sides. We would use this symbol that looks like a line segment, and then just the endpoints are how you'd name that line segment. And then C. This here is a ray. It has an endpoint and goes on in one direction. The symbol for that would look like this. When you name a ray, the most common question. You must start with this endpoint. You must name with the endpoint first. So Q is the first letter you'd use, and then P. Okay, next one, number two. Um, in this figure below, SV is 22 and TV is 8. Um, you saw one like this with the sub on that worksheet, but this one is structured a little bit differently. SV is 22. And then ST, oh wait, TV is 8. And then it asks to find ST right here. Okay, so some of you might just say, oh, just use subtraction. That is correct. You could subtract these two numbers to get this missing length. Um, the other way you could structure it, if you like to see things more in equations, x plus 8 equals 22, and you could solve for x that way. So subtract 8 from both sides, and x equals 314. And then this 14, you just put it in the box. <coughs> Okay, next, um, number three. In the figure below, measure angle two is 55 degrees. Um, find the measure of angle one right here. Um, here it shows this little square right here. This square means that these angles are complementary, meaning they equal 90 degrees, or like add together to 90 degrees. So to find this missing angle, you would do 90 minus 55. It comes out to 35 degrees. And then you type that in here. So for this question set, they'll either be complementary angles or they'll be supplementary angles. So if it forms a straight line, then they're supplementary. And that would equal 180 degrees. So the one you did with the sub, it looks like. It looks like this, but either one of these would be on the test. It's going to give you one or the other. Okay, next, midpoint up here. Um, this is where people struggled a little bit today. In my first period, it was with midpoint and distance, so make sure that you're really practicing it um, and figuring it all out. Um, I know it's tempting to use, try to use shortcuts with midpoint and distance formula, um, but if you use a shortcut, it's very likely that you'll mess up. Um, so first thing you want to do is write down that formula. Um, then you want to label your points. So the first set of points will be x1, y1. And then the second set is x2, y2. Then from there, you plug in your numbers into the formula. So you're adding your x's together, negative 3 plus 5 divided by 2, and then adding your y's together, 7 plus negative 1 divided by 2. And then from here, solve this, 
2 over 2, we get 6 over 2, 1 and 3, and this is your answer right here that you type in the box. Um, and you can always check your work just based on the concept. You're looking for the middle number between your x's. So the middle between negative 3 and 5 makes sense that it's 1. The middle between 7 and negative 1, it makes sense that the middle would be 3. Um, something that people stumbled upon is if you get something like 0 over 2, that just equals 0. It's fine. Just 0 divided by a number is just 0. So if that happens, it's just 0. Okay. Next one is distance formula. Another one that people stumbled on just because there's a lot of places that you can make errors. Um, but one way to avoid the errors is by first writing down the equation and labeling the points. Like I said, I wish there was a shortcut to this, but there really isn't. If you label your points and write down the equation, you're a lot less likely to make a mistake. So from here, now that I have things labeled, I'm just plugging it in. Negative 9 minus negative 5 squared. And then 1 minus negative 3 squared. Then from here, add the opposite, get negative 4 squared, add the opposite, positive 4 squared. Negative 4 times negative 4 is going to be positive 16, 16 squared to 32. Um, now if this came out to a perfect like whole number, I would solve it like that, but in this case, square root of 32 isn't, it's going to come out to like a decimal or something. And this says to give an exact answer, not a decimal approximation. So you can just put this in the box and it will accept it as correct. Um, if for whatever reason you got square root of 64, which came out to 8, or square root of 100, which comes out to 10, um, then you would put these whole numbers in the box. But for 32, that's not the case. Okay. Um, that is actually it. Those are the five that we're focusing on. So now on Alex, there is a 10 question assignment. Um, they'll, it'll give you two questions each. Um, normally with the homework, like eight out of 10, I give you full credit. But on this one, it is what it is. I want you to master the five questions. So 100% is 100%. 70 is a 70. Like, get them. Correct. Good question. So, 